If you've got unpaid court fines, you might soon be seeing a familiar face. A former police chief and his new department could be knocking on your door and collecting those court costs. Find out what they're doing. Plus, we'll show you how one couple has turned a hobby into a full-time business at the bottom of the ocean. Those stories and much more are ahead here on Eyewitness News at 6 o'clock. Be sure to join us for that. Cindy, I bet you want to know what's happening at Columbia Park Ridge Medical Center. Yeah. Saturday morning, 8.30 to noon. This is a big event. Senior Educational Health Fair. Oh, yeah. They're going to have health screenings for hearing, cholesterol, blood sugar, and vision. Information for seniors from over 30 exhibitors. How about that? Columbia Park Ridge Medical Center. That's on Macaulay Avenue. Mm -hmm. 8.30 to noon on Saturday. That is really something special. Hope you can make it out Saturday morning. Good way to get a lot of free help. Yeah, you just, all the, anything that may be wrong with you, they can give you a screening and let you know whether you need help or not. Now we're going to turn to Paul Barris. He's outside. Paul, how's it looking out there? It's pretty good. A few clouds out here, but there's breaks in the cloud cover. Things are looking pretty good, actually. I think we're going to have a great night. Temperatures will be dropping fast. The uh, drier air is pushing on in, and uh, all the showers and thunderstorms are pretty much gotten out of here. We got good news about our puppy dog. Finally, little Freddy got adopted today by some people in Chattanooga. We want to thank them for coming out and picking up Freddy. He's got a brand new home and he was a cutie. Next Monday, we'll have another little doggy for you. Let's take a look right now at our Storm Alert Doppler radar. As we put that into motion, we had a few showers pop up here and there, but they were isolated and they didn't last that long. And there's a little bit of action now just north of Dalton out near Varnell, uh, Cahutta, and that's pushing off towards the east. And there may be a little bit of thunder in there, but it shouldn't last that much longer. It should be pushing out into Murray County and it should be all over. Now the wider version of the satellite, look up near Bristol. There's some pretty good thunderstorms out there. We had reports of dime-sized to golf ball-sized hail moving across the mountains of North Carolina, but uh, that's just about it as far as that goes. And the satellite photo just shows some afternoon clouds left over, so things are getting a little bit better around here. Let's check those temperatures now. It's 81 Memphis, 76 Nashville, 83 Birmingham, and 80 in Atlanta. So the temperatures still fairly warm, and they'll be like that next couple days, but the humidity levels are going to go a lot lower. That high pressure building in across the Great Lakes, and that means fair weather for us. All the rain, well to the south and well to the north. So we have absolutely no problems around here. Currently, it's 80. Winds are out of the northwest at 5, a few clouds out. Humidity, 49%. That makes the heat index feel like it's 81. You can't complain about that either. For your evening out, no problems. Any isolated showers ending. Just a few clouds, 69 to 79 when you wake up. Could be a little bit of patchy fog in a few places, 57 to 61. Otherwise, just going to be quite pleasant. Now, Steve Holly's here all the way from Flintstone, Georgia. And he's going to be telling us about Valley Fest. Steve's good to see you. Good Tell see us about you, what's going to be happening coming up in Flintstone. Flintstone. Valley Fest. Saturday, this Saturday from 10 to 6. Mm -hmm. We're going to have at least um, uh, 40 crafters. We're going to have blacksmiths. We're going to have pony rides, petting zoo, all kinds of food. Absolutely the best barbecue in North Georgia. That's great. Uh, and singing all day long. It's a great time for family. Now, you can't get lost in Flintstone. So you just come down. If you're coming from Chattanooga, go right through St. Elmo. Head south and follow the uh, signs of Exactly, and mm -hmm. you won't miss it. Or if you're coming from uh, 75 or Fort Oglethorpe, you just mm -hmm. take Georgia 2 all the way to the foot of Lookout Mountain, turn mm -hmm. left, and you'll run right into and it. I'll tell you, besides the fact they're going to have a great fest out there, Flintstone's one of the prettiest areas in the Tennessee Valley. So I'll That's tell you, right. come out and check it out. When does this start again? On Saturday? At Saturday at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 6 p.m. Okay, so come on out and check it out. One of the first ones, the first fall festivals coming up is Valley Fest 97. And there's the number. Uh, if you need more information, the admission is free. You can't beat that. Thanks Parking. for coming, Steve. You're welcome. All righty. Paul, you are right about Flintstone. Beautiful scenery it is there. A, it is a beautiful spot. Thank All you right. very much. Okay. Thank you. Now we want to know what you think about zero tolerance in our schools. And how the school systems deal with discipline problems. Our first caller is from Rossville. You're on live at 530. Hello. Hello. Uh, I was calling in regard to the incident up at Marion County. Okay. Um, I'm absolutely for the zero tolerance policy. Um, however, you've got to ask yourself, uh, as far as the weapon is concerned, how they deemed the broom as a weapon. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was probably part of the school property there. And I, it's not like the student brought a gun or a knife or, or something uh, to arm someone with him onto the school property there. So uh, I think you've got a, a problem area there where you have to uh, ask yourself if there's not an exception there. There are some gray areas. Of course, a broom handle can be used as a weapon. There's no doubt about it. But uh, I'm sure there are some gray areas that uh, require each of these cases to be looked at one by one. Well, I just happen to think it was a little extreme, you know, a, a full a school year for, for the athlete. And uh, I could say, you know, what would have happened just for, for an example, say there was a book within his reach and he threw a book at the guy or something, you see? Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, 
it's just hard to say that this thing was actually a weapon. I don't think he was actually thinking that as a weapon as he had in his hand. In other words. All right. So. Thank you for your comment. Yes, thank you for calling. We appreciate that. Now we have a gentleman from Chattanooga on the line. Hello. Hello. Uh, I agree with the gentleman from Austin, but also uh, the what I've been reading about this situation, the young man got punished, I believe, 10 days suspension. Right. Suspension. I believe he had to do 60 hours public uh, work. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, how they do. Right. Now order. then... Uh, folks, if the gentleman did what he was supposed to do, and then why don't that bunch of skunks down in Jasper, not Marion County, Jasper, Tennessee, the bunch of skunks down there, leave the thing alone, let the man go to school and get an education and go up there and beat the hound out of them playing football. That's the whole story of the football team. All right. Jasper, have a good day. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Uh, without using the term skunks, that's what's happening right now. He is back in school. He will be playing football. But as Scott mentioned earlier, another hearing coming up, which may change all that. Yeah. Let's go to Chattanooga for our next call. You're on live at 530. Hello. Um, my question was, if, the, um, if he had been in a fight in November, would he have been ex expelled for the full year for, until the following November? Or would he have been expelled to the end of the year? Because if he would have just been expelled till the end of the school year, then they don't have any business expelling him for the following school year, unless he would have been expelled for a full 365 days. Mm -hmm. I would think it means literally a school year. Of course, this incident happened on the last day of school, 96-97, so the suspension was to have been for this entire school year. So I would think that would be the meaning of that. Yeah. Good question. And as you mentioned earlier, there seem to be still some gray areas areas even though they do call it zero tolerance and case um, by case basis needless to say this is still the talk of marion county and the tennessee valley yeah. so we'll be covering the newest developments as they occur next up on live at 5 30 some people might consider them simple children's books but to actor bill cosby these books are touching tributes to his slain son we'll show you what he wrote I'm on your side, reporter Russell Martin, coming up in just a few minutes, how to tackle those travel troubles in today's Russell's Rules.